Welcome to Timmy's Tech. I'm Timmy. Today's video is going to be about the design process of my 1 12th scale RAF Jaguar project. What you're looking at here is the nose landing gear section of the aircraft, which I have previously designed in Rhino. I'm now trying a new program called Fusion 360. This program has allowed me to do some assembly work in the computer so that I can verify my designs before I actually start building them. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you is the work that I've done in Fusion 360 to show off some of the joints and to demonstrate that the parts move correctly, they fit correctly, and ultimately are in scale to the prototype aircraft. Here's one of the simplest joints. It's the tire and wheel, and that's tire with a Y as I'm building a Royal Air Force version. Very simple joint, and I've just set it to run and you can see that it works. The next joint is the nose wheel steering. And here I've just set it to run back and forth. We can verify that the parts work reasonably well. There's a little scissor link that actually drives the joint. And I've verified that those linkages work. And if I can build this in real life, I'm relatively assured that it's going to work. Next is actually the retraction sequence. The retraction process begins with the aircraft coming off the ground. When the weight is off the aircraft, the shock absorber naturally extends. And you can see that's done here on the model. No interference. The traction sequence starts, then the main gear doors open. And here you can see several views so that you can look inside and see the actual retraction jack, the torque tube, and the connections down to the doors. So once the doors are open, the retraction sequence begins, and I can pull the door up. I'm having a little bit of problem with the maths here, I just type in the up angle, and the gear seats then the main rear doors are closed. And here you can see that the up lock in theory can work. And as I spin around, I can verify that there's not any interference between any of the parts once it's all closed. And again, here's a good look at the retraction jack for the main doors. We move on to the design review. So this drawing was originally done in Rhino, which is a great program, although it doesn't have these joint capabilities. So I had to start with two conditions, either the gear down or the gear up. In Rhino, I could take a look at the, at the pivot points of each of the parts and check to make sure that they worked in the down position and the up position. When I brought the model into Fusion 360, I found that one of the forward doors didn't quite close right. I had originally had a double joint in there. The double joint allowed the door to fit when it was both open and closed. However, there wasn't anything in the model to cause the door to close. And you can see that here, where that lower forward door just stays stuck in place and I had to manually move it back and forth. I was thinking that on the aircraft that the forward door somehow pushed the rear door closed but after careful consideration and closer look at the aircraft, I realized that was not the case, and so I needed to redesign the link. And here's a couple of retraction sequences where you can see the link has been redesigned. So you can see the door extends and ends up in the right place without any intervention. And one more retraction sequence so that you can see the joint locations and see the angles as they change as the gear goes through its retraction sequence. Let's take a look at some verification of scale. In other words, does the model match the prototype aircraft? When I designed this model, I started with gross dimensions. That as I knew the length of the fuselage, wingspan, uh, basic general arrangement dimension. From those dimensions, I relatively scaled everything else. 
In other words, I managed to figure out where certain panel lines were and stru certain structural pieces were and had a reasonable confidence that I had those in the right place. And from there, I added other parts and positioned them relative to the known positions. And I kept working my way down until I got all of the details done. The beauty of this CAD work is that I was able to verify design. If I can get all of the parts to work, I'm pretty confident that I've got the correct dimensions and the model is in scale and accurately represents the real thing. So let's check that out. So here we'll start with the brace strut jack. That is the hydraulic actuator that moves the gear up and down. If we start with the brace jack in its closed position, and we take a measurement from a couple of known points, so the end of the outer cylinder down to where the cylinder meets its connection point, and I use a tool in the CAD software to do that. I can look up here and I get a number of 0 0.109. Then we go into the retracted position and make a measurement from the same two points. I get a number of 1.256 inches. Now if I go in and take a look at a reference material that I found, and by the way I found this after I completed the landing gear, so I didn't have this number beforehand, and I go and take a look at the brace strut jack, and I look at the dimensions between stops, the stroke, the distance between retracted and extended, you see that's 352 plus or minus one millimeter, but I'm working in inches, so we'll go over here and look at one foot, 1.85 inches, plus or minus four tenths of an inch. Do a little math, I take 1.256 minus 0 0.109. That gives me a stroke on the model of 1.147 inches. Multiply by 12, since I'm in 1 12th scale, it gives me 13.76 inches, which is pretty close to the 13.85 inches. But it gets better if we go and scale the actual numbers down to the model numbers and compare what the number should be in scale versus what the what this model will be. So if we take the 13.85 inches and divide that by 12, and then we go back and do the quick math and get the stroke on the model, we get 1.147, and that's a difference of 0 0.007, or seven thousandths of an inch is about the width of a piece of paper. Not too bad, I can live with that. And let's try one more. We'll go to the Oleo extension. So the same process here, we get 0.45 in the closed position. We go to the extended position, take the same measurement from the same points. We get 0 0.809 inches. Going back to our information, we go to the stroke of the shock absorber, we get 4.284 inches. Let's go ahead and convert that to scale inches on the aircraft. So we take 4.284 divided by 12. We get 0.357. Do the quick math on the model. 0 0.809, it's extended length, minus 0.45 to 0.359. Subtract our scale units of what it should be. And we get two thousandths. Pretty close, if you ask me. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at a CAD design. It gives you a hint as to how powerful CAD can be in verifying a design so that when I go to build the actual model, I've got some chance of it actually working. Thanks for visiting. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and share if you did, and visit timmystech.com. There you'll find galleries and articles and other information that I hope inspires and informs your scale engineering project. See ya!